All right, well, we are doing something different this week in a, in a certain sense. <clears throat> we are adding in the people uh, that, that so desire from uh, the uh, First Peter class that I had uh, put on hold for a while. Uh, we are adding them into this class, and we're doing it specifically because I don't know how much I've said or how much has been revealed yet. But while searching the firstborn, and particularly uh, particularly uh, Genesis 18 with Abraham, um, it dawned on me <laughs> that much of the same things that are going on in Genesis 18, 1, and then through, through literally the rest of that chapter, <clears throat> are things that in a major way pertain to First Peter. And <clears throat> so, you know, I, I think over a couple of weeks I, I actually realized that, but then it got so strong that I thought, you know what, we need to bring those folks in because the, it, it's going to give some, ang some answers from uh, maybe a, a little bit different angle that might be a little easier. Um, and so, um, so what that means, though, for those of you who have been following the firstborn class for some time is <clears throat> that um, probably tonight and maybe even tomorrow night, I may need to give, I know for sure tonight, but uh, uh, not tomorrow night, the next class that we have next week. Uh, I will need to give some explanations to catch them up to the things that we've been discovering. Um, and uh, so, it, you know, it might be a little refresher course on some of that stuff, but uh, I think it'll be good. But I do want to say that I'm telling you, even today, uh, the Holy Spirit has really, really been showing me these angles in the firstborn class that are clearly things related to first peter and the corridor and all of those kind of things so <clears throat> be a little patient so that we can all be together on the same page when we when we start to take off but it's going to be good and there's going to be a lot of scriptures that are going to validate these things so praise god so i'm going to go ahead and start tonight and um Basically, for those of you who have been in the First Peter class uh, and not in this class, we've been dealing with uh, God in, in uh, reference to two separate names. One of them is Elohim, and the other one is Adonai. And um, w it is literally within <clears throat> those two names that we have been discovering uh, the, some of the inworkings of God, which would be Elohim. Uh, some of the inworkings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, um, and of course, you know, we want to know, we, you know, we want to know the Word, but we want to know from the Word, and we want to know um, relations that they have. We want to know the specific relations that uh, they have towards us individually. And, uh, but we don't want to do that in some sort of theological manner. We want to really discover uh, these things about, we, we can say God, we can say the Trinity, we can say the Godhead, we can say Elohim. And so we're going we're gonna to get into a little bit of that tonight, particularly in relationship to uh, Elohim, because that was, we were there, and, um, and then all of a sudden, a realization of, of uh, Adonai was in a place that I didn't expect it and didn't understand it. And I, because I had made a mistake concerning that, it drove me to the Word, and it drove me to the heart of God. That's all, always what, I, see, I don't just go to the Word. I'm not, I'm, 
I'm not just a scholar of some kind. Most of y'all know that. I want to know the heart of the Lord. <clears throat> and I want to know why the name change, as it were, or the change came where it did. And we've, we've started into discovering that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just um, <clears throat> read a little bit. And the, the more I can do of this, I think it'll help us to expedite into the really good stuff that we'll get into soon. Um, uh, two names, Elohim and Adonai. In Genesis 15 through 18, we are dealing with two major aspects of God. Those aspects are related to specific names applied to them. The first is Elohim. <clears throat> it applies to the, to the three of them together. Elohim is their name, who refer to them as when they're one together, but they are still three, that's Elohim. Um, uh, other man-devised names that represent the same thing as Elohim are the Trinity and the Godhead, which I said earlier. But those are man-devised names, the Trinity and the Godhead. <clears throat> the, the Trinity is a very popular usage uh, with theologians and, and just laymen also uh, to represent God as in three persons. <clears throat> and um, so uh, the first name used is, uh, for God is Elohim. And we found out uh, through really applying myself into the scripture in relationship to these names <clears throat> that uh, Elohim is the first name used for God, and it was used 20 or 35 times um, as the only name that there was that was used for God in the Old Testament um, un until uh, after 35 names. And then Jehovah is introduced. <clears throat> so... Um, um, the, the main name or the name emphasis where I was going for, what I was shooting for in, uh, <clears throat> in introducing uh, Elohim, uh, who in, Ch again, remember we're in uh, uh, Genesis 18, uh, but in chapter 17, Elohim is used over and over and over and over and over <clears throat> in chapter 18. 18, God appears to Abraham as three men. And that's Elohim. If it's God and there's three of them, that's Elohim. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, but the, the, the one scripture that I was really focusing on within those uh, 35 usages in um, Genesis, before any other name was used, was Genesis 1.26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image, our, not just my, let me make my, you know, let us make man in our image after our likeness <clears throat> and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Um, so, Throughout all of the creation story and then all of the situations <clears throat> um, early on, you have one name for God, Elohim, and it represents the three of them, and it represents, it would be as if the Bible were saying this, I want to start with the fact that God is made up of three, and they're specific for a reason. And <clears throat> that, the, that the Godhead, that the Trinity, that Elohim, because this says Elohim, and Elohim said, let us. So that's all three of them coming into agreement. We want man in our image. We're not just wanting ducks and squirrels. And, and trees and bushes and clouds and we're not just wanting we're want we're wanting something see he didn't say 
He didn't say, and he created a tree and said, let's create this tree in our image. No, he did There was no, it, it, it lists no specific thing on that. But when it got to man, Elohim said, we want him to be like us. Now, there's so much to get into that, and we will get into that even more, those of you who've been following along in this class, because um, I, because I sort of made a mistake in, in addressing uh, 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 the three there as the word Elohim, it was Adonai, and I never got to finish this right here, but this is and was the very heartbeat for which they made man and created man. And therefore, all that was created around it was, okay, let's, let's create uh, let's, a fish and fowls of the air and let's create cattle and let's, you know, the earth and, and creeping things and all this stuff. But then he says, let us make man in our image and then give him dominion over that. So again, man with God's image as Elohim, knowing how to flow. This is, this is why I'm, this study is so important. Knowing how to flow with Elohim. And there is a flow. And we, we'll have so many verses from the Bible that just, oh, I mean... They're not even like truth words. They're like fragrance that brings this spirit up to us. And um, so, um, <clears throat> um, so then I got into a little bit in relationship to this creation and talked about it. Um, uh, in the Bible, it will say that the Father created. Another place, it will say the Son another, the Spirit, they are all included because the Trinity, Elohim, did it. So in this place in the Bible over here, it can say the Father created, you know, and over here it can say the Spirit created, and over here it can say the Son created, and we can go, well, who did it, you know? Or we can read one place and say, oh, then just that part of the Trinity did it, that part of Elohim did it. But no. The very fact that everywhere through that whole process says Elohim did it. And that's the three of them with their part, with their part. Okay, so, um, so what I'm going to do, and again, <clears throat> for some of you that have been with us in this uh, firstborn class, this will be a little tedious, just going through some scriptures to show that, and particularly in relationship to that creation. Um, but, you know, who was it that said, um, to say the same things unto you is not irksome, but necessary? I think it was Paul. Um, we can, you know, we can always tune our ears and tune our hearts to the Lord in all of these classes that people have and all these sessions and all this stuff and just say, Lord, I just want to hear from you and you can hear from him. I mean, as long as somebody's quoting scriptures, the spirit of God can fall on that for you. So let's all stay Stay tied in. So again, Genesis 1, verse 1 through 3. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And God, Elohim, said, let there be light, and there was light. So you're already seeing for sure two of the three at work there. You're seeing at least God as represented by Father and the Son, uh, and then the Spirit of God. And it says the Spirit of Elohim. Okay. Now I'm going to jump to 2 Kings 19.15. 
<clears throat> and Hezekiah prayed before the Lord, which is usually Jehovah, and said, O Lord God, so O Jehovah Elohim of Israel, thou art Elohim, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. And so we're seeing a couple of things here. We're seeing um, <clears throat> the beginning of mixing different names of God. And uh, there are a lot. And we're only trying to deal with Elohim and Adonai right now. But Jehovah is the most used name, and it's the most common name. And I think that it, it, it is more of the standard just name for them. Whereas many of these names, like El Shaddai and you know, Jehovah Jireh, they actually are pertaining to something in God that functions in this manner. Okay. <clears throat> um, Isaiah 37, 15 through 17. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, <clears throat> let's see, it looks like I've got a little bit of the same thing here. Um, in, uh, verse 17, Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear, open thine eyes, O, and both of those are Jehovah, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, who hath sent to reproach the living Elohim. The living Elohim. The living Elohim. Um, and let's see. <clears throat> I, I know the reason why I put this one down twice. Let me read this verse 15 again. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, that's Jehovah, and said, O Jehovah of host, God of Israel, Elohim, Elohim of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubs. O Elohim of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubs. Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear, open thine eyes, O Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he hath uh, sent to reproach the living Elohim, who, verse 7, 15, who dwells in the holy of holies. Okay, right now, see, can you see, you can, you can already start getting familiar with him. Because you know the, you kind of know the God that dwelt there, but you didn't know it was Elohim, and you didn't know that to them he was the God of Israel. And I think they use other names too, but he is, has to be their God because he's the God of the whole earth. And that's what he says right here. Um, uh, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Okay. All right, Ephesians 3, 9. <clears throat> And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is an important point right here in relationship to Ephesians 3, 9. And that is that in the New Testament, and this is a bummer, but they don't use the Old Testament names. They really use a lot of generic names for God. And... Uh, um, uh, that that's something that you can search out, but it's they use a lot of um, I like the general name for God is just El, so El Shaddai is God that does this, but they're not they're not adding that extra part if something that happened in the Old Testament with El Shaddai is happening here, they just would say El for God. <clears throat> All right, so. Um, uh, so when it says right here, uh, what I just read, uh, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Well, okay, guess what? It's referring to Elohim. And they created all things by Christ Jesus, but it was the Father and the Son that did that. And you're getting a picture of the three. Um, 
again, all this is not going to be theology of the Trinity. We're just trying to lay some groundwork here uh, because we're going to meet the Trinity, <laughs> if you will. We're going to meet Elohim. I, I prefer using that name because it's so expressive in the Old Testament. <clears throat> all right, Colossians 1.16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in earth, for by Elohim. No, it's not using that in the New Testament, but the Old Testament used it when, and that's why I was reading Old Testament version, verses that talked about Elohim created it, and then went to Genesis, and it says Elohim was the only name that God that that was used for God at that time. So we can safely read into it. For by Him, by Elohim, were all things created that are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Elohim and for Him. But this is specifically. Jesus Christ by Jesus for him because <clears throat> it said that earlier and is before all and he is before all things and by him all things consist okay and then just to close out a couple of verses in the book of Revelation and um, uh, the more we get into this and it'll it'll start. It's like a, it's like pieces of a puzzle. You got to have the first pieces to be able to start putting it together. The more we get into this, the more when you read the New Testament, you're gonna know, and who it's talking about. And I want to say this, that there are so many places in the New Testament that are identifying different, different. Uh, members of Elohim. That's going to help us understand their function, their relationship, our how we're supposed to relate to each one and then them as a whole. So uh, that's my goal. You know, I don't I I don't want to weary I search the scriptures all the time. I don't want to weary myself with just searching the scriptures. I want the Lord and I'm in this for the Lord. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, to, to, cert, to look up all these scriptures and everything can be tedious. But, but I do it, number one, I do it because I believe that the scriptures will say the truth without me having to say it. The scriptures are saying it. And we can see that more easily. But number two, I... I know that the Spirit of God is on us. He's on me to know Him in ways that we haven't known Him, in beautiful ways, wonderful explanations from the Word itself, uh, with witnesses all over. Like many witnesses call the Scriptures. And, th and that's what Jesus said in John 5.39. The scriptures, you know, the scriptures bear witness of me, but I have a greater than the scriptures. It's my Father. There it is. That's Elohim. <laughs> they're so they're so amazing together. I just love it. I just love it. Um, Revelation four two through three and ten through eleven, <clears throat> and immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Okay, well, if you're in the Spirit, it, it relates to the Holy Spirit. There's no, I was in the Spirit, but it wasn't a person. No, you're in the Spirit by the Holy Spirit having hold of you. And I was in the Spirit, and then you see one sat on the throne. Well, guess what? The Spirit came first. And when you were in Him and flowing with Him, then you could see one, another one. Not the Holy Spirit, but one sitting on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a uh, sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like an, unto an emerald. And then uh, verse 10, 
the four and the twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. Okay, remember the God that liveth, the living God we read, um, said the living Elohim. Ever and ever cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are created. So there is just this realization by the Spirit before the throne that this is the way it's everything's governed, this is the way it's supposed to be, this is the way you're supposed to see it, that all this is created by Elohim <clears throat> for glory that we haven't, we can't touch on yet. But those of you who've been in First Peter, for glory. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then Revelation 10, 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever. See, there's this, there's this ongoing thing that this, who is, who is um, guiding all of this? Who is the one? Well, we would say God. Well, we read these scriptures and we say that's God. But see, this is, I don't know how many times tonight we've read this, that it is referring to him that liveth forever and ever, or, or him that uh, liveth um, uh, from different aspects of that this God that has lived before there was all of this, and after all this is going to be gone, this guy has a vested interest in the earth and he created it toward that vested interest and it's not as big as we think. Meaning, it's not like all, so that all of our lives could be happy. or all No, no. It is directly pointed to the sun or the Son is directly pointed towards the Father. Or the Spirit is, you know, will not speak of Himself, but declares the, the Son. Uh, who created heaven and earth and the things that are therein and the earth and the things that are therein are, uh, and the sea, the things which are therein that there should be, that there should be Time no longer. Created all of that, all of that, and all the things therein, but that there should be, because it's come to a time, that there should be time no longer. It's Revelation 10, 5, 6. Um, and, well, yeah. It's going to be wrapped up. And when it is, it's not going to be just the Christian view that all of us are going to be saved and so we're just going to live happily ever after in heaven and that Jesus is going to be sitting on a throne somewhere in heaven and we're just going to go over and just love on him and this is just going to be so wonderful. It's going to be more like not us, but him. Well, so you say, well, don't say that, Randy. That scares me because the unknown scares me. Uh, well, then get to know, <laughs> then get to know Elohim. Because before there was an earth and a sea and birds and all this kind of stuff, there was Him, and He's the one that made it, who liveth forever and ever. And it's all going to be folded up like a vesture. And that there should be time no longer is going to come where all the things that were meant, you know, all the things that we like, 
that were meant to, uh, we think were meant to make us happy, were meant to make him to, to his good pleasure. Ephesians is full of that. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. So, <clears throat> to get this point across, uh, I was searching, <clears throat> uh, probably cross-referencing, because this happens a lot. I'll be searching one particular subject, and the Holy Spirit will come along, and it's like he'll cut a crossroad right across it, and go, here, follow me, I got something else. I'm going, I haven't finished this one. But this is what he does. And this is where this came from. And it, But instead of this being about creation, it's basically trying to set forth the same thing in relationship to the covenant. And I think there's something here that maybe all of you maybe have never really contemplated about the covenant. All right, so... Uh, Jeremiah 31, 31. You're all familiar with these scriptures because they're some of the main ones that talk about the new covenant. <clears throat> all right. So behold, the days come, <clears throat> excuse me, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, <clears throat> which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. <clears throat> All right, so, in verse 31, Jeremiah writes of Jehovah, saying that a day is coming. <clears throat> a day is coming, and he marks that day by the coming of the new covenant. Okay, this is, all right, I think we all know that. <clears throat> um, it'll be made with both kingdoms, Judah and Israel. The covenant will not be according to the former covenant that he made previously. All right. So here might be one that trips you up a little bit. Uh, what was the covenant that was previous? Well, we all say Mount Sinai. We all say it was the covenant of the law that God made at Mount Sinai. But this isn't saying that, and it never has. So let's see what he is saying. <clears throat> What was the old covenant that he refers to here? It was not the one made at Mount Sinai. No, that came after the covenant that he is referring to here. Okay. So what happened? What covenant was there he made with Israel before Mount Sinai? <clears throat> well, he says what it is. Um, he's talking about the firstborn covenant. The firstborn covenant that he made with Israel. The firstborn covenant. Okay, what, what's the name of this class? Firstborn. <laughs> the firstborn covenant is what it's about. Say, so prove it. I don't have to. We'll just read it. Okay, but <clears throat> not, um, let's see. Uh, he, the firstborn covenant he made with them based on giving, uh, giving him the firstborn. It's the covenant that he made with them based on them giving to God the firstborn. Here we go. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. Bring them out of Egypt. Not bring them into the wilderness, into Mount Sinai. This was a covenant he made with them to bring them out. And the covenant he made was one thing. I, you know, I give me my firstborn. Let my firstborn son go. That was his covenant. And he, he made that covenant in blood. The death of the lamb. And they all signed it by putting it on the doorpost. Okay. Not a, I'm going to read it again because here it is. Uh, <clears throat> 
uh, he is talking about the firstborn covenant that he made with them based on giving him <clears throat> the firstborn. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Now, only people that have been studying the firstborn for a while understand when we go all the way back to Exodus, when we were studying there, we saw that they got into the wilderness and they, the, the parents didn't want to give up their kids in sacrifice to God. And so they withheld them. And so, uh, and then even the, the, the firstborn of every family, uh, even, even they held back. And so God had to make another covenant at Mount Sinai that wasn't the same as this one. Now I'll explain that one, that, okay? Because <clears throat> they broke it in the wilderness. In the wilderness, they broke that covenant. Um, <clears throat> he emphasized a day of the new covenant and a day of the old one. Did you notice the two words, the, the day? Um, not according, the, the first one was, uh, behold, the days come, okay? The days come while I will make a new covenant. The other one was, uh, not according to the covenant I made with them, their fathers in the day. So these are important days that are going on here. And they are identifying different days and different covenants that were going on, okay? Um, so he emphasized a day of the new covenant and a day of the old one. The old one was marked by him taking them out of the land of Egypt. In the day that I took them out of the land of Egypt. In Jeremiah, he emphasizes the fact that they had already broke that covenant. Therefore, God made another one with them at Mount Sinai, allowing for animal sacrifices and redemption money in place of giving him the firstborn son. All right. So, I'm going to I'm going to end with that except for a little bit of explanation. Um if there's a chance <clears throat> that you had never you've read the new covenant <laughs> covenant scriptures from the Old Testament, and then we're, we'll get into them in, in also Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, where they're quoted. We'll look at those too. But if you have, and you felt like you had a good grasp of it, and maybe, uh, I, to me, this is, it just says it. It says it. It's not, there's nothing dark or weird that I would have to read into that. It just says, you know, and I'm just telling you what it just said, and it does. <clears throat> but if you have, and you never saw that before, then what does it say? It says, we, we, we could use knowing the Lord a little more. We could use knowing the Scriptures a little more. You and me. I, I know there's so much I don't know. But we're going to have to dig in. We're going to have to say, Lord, I want to know you, and by knowing, I'm going to dig into your word, but not to be a, a not not to be a scripture scholar, but I want to be able to have the Spirit on me so that I can see the one uh, that's on the throne. The, the, I want to see Elohim, but I want to see the Spirit that is Elohim, that part of them at work in me and I want that work to show me the one on the throne and I want to be able to identify the movements of how you are Lord and and uh, and be familiar have a true living relationship with you every day and it be more real than than this world because we, you know, there in uh, Genesis 1, it says, And the Spirit moved across the face of the deep. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Elohim, moved across the face of the deep. And then God said, Let there be light. <clears throat> the, the movement of the Spirit. The, we want the, the movement of the Spirit, not just the letter, not just to read into the Scriptures, like in those where we can always just read in that he's talking about uh, the Old Covenant, or what we call the Old Covenant, 
being the one that was made at Mount Sinai. Well, the one made at Mount Sinai was because of great failure of the, the earlier covenant that happened in Egypt, that he took them out and wanted them to, to um, let go, as it were, his firstborn son, which he says in uh, Exodus 4, and I can't remember the exact verse. <clears throat> so, so all I'm saying is, you, right now, especially, um, well, any of you, you don't have to digest all this right now. They're just, we've just given examples of things and stuff. But maybe the ending here could be a good one that really hits us deep and says, I can go along the rest of my Christian life and keep just hearing the way everyone else taught it and always believe that that's the way it is. And I want to hear it from God. I want, I, you know, I mean, I want to be able to read the word and see exactly what it's saying. And that'll take, that'll take Elohim the spirit, that part of Elohim. So could we just, could we just pray and could we just long after? And could we just say, if I read one scripture a day, I could, I could still open my heart and pray deeply, Lord, if you can't, if I'm not spiritually in the right place for you to show me the fullness of this verse, then um, uh, let this verse be added to other things that you will eventually show me of yourself, that I may walk with you in ways that I could never have believed. Father, we just pray this in Jesus' name. We pray it not for ourselves. We're not praying it for us to be spiritual. We're not praying based on on the created things of the earth, but the new creation, let us make, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, Father, in the new creation. Which, Father, is not a, an earthbound religious um, setup, but it is a, an eternal reality that was in your heart that you kept expressing that throughout those scriptures that we read. That you were before all this and you made all this and you'll be after it. And if we could find you in that heart, if we could find you the way you want to be found in those things instead of us just reading that you were the creator and we got it and why do you keep saying it over and over. You keep saying it over and over because you know you haven't reached us with the true spirit of what, why you have it in there. And you're doing it because you're drawing us. You care. You're doing it because you want us with you in this. So Father, wash us and and move us by your Spirit. And bring us closer in, Father, and, and, and all the other things that we would try to pray in words. Hear our heart and let it be according to your heart, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.